as a Jet fan, and I am a Jet fan, I'm the lone Jets fan on this show, I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, we got Aaron Rodgers. This team is more than willing and more than able to go over there and beat Kansas City in Kansas City when they're not. It's a problem. And I, I, I'm, I am not excited about this season because I am thinking high, and then when I think high, I think low. And when I think low, then I should think high. But I'm not thinking low. I'm thinking high because everybody knows that I predict the Jets, if Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, to win a significant amount of games. Yep. And you're, uh, Fish even says it on the on the top graphic. Uh, it's the reverse jinx type thing because he has done that. When he was coaching, he has done that with many different players. <laughs> I think uh, when they were playing Jacksonville in the AFC Championship game, he called Leonard Fournette the toughest rookie running back he ever faced. And I think he contained him to like he jinxed oh, 40 yards. Yeah. He jinxed it. He's a jinx. Yeah. I don't want Bill Belichick talking about the Jets. I'd say that the Jets suck. I'd rather you say that the Jets suck and they're not going to amount to anything. Oh, Brees Hall, he's one of the best backs in football. Darrell Wilson's one of the best one-on-one -on -one wide receivers in football. Oh, my God, Smith, when healthy, he's the best tackle in football. Hey, Aaron Rodgers? Oh, nobody can touch him. He's the smartest quarterback in the NFL. Meanwhile, he fell flat on his ass in four plays last year. Right, and he's very tactical with that kind of thing. He's making those players. Oh, my God, make, I'm going to have a heart attack. Making those I mean, seriously, the Jets give me a heart attack. Man. I, I'm, I'm just going to have a – I have Ajita. I have Ajita. I've been drinking water all day, ladies and gentlemen. I, I fill it with some meal. I mean, it's good. It gives me a little bit of a taste. But you know what? I get agita every time I think about the New York Jets. I mean, I'm going to be at Mills House on Thursday, and there are going to be Jet fans there. And I'm going to be standing there saying, please, do not do the J-E-T-S, Jets, <laughs> Jets, Jets, because I'm going to throw up. Yeah. I, I can't do it. Anything better than calling the team gangrene? I, oh, gangrene. <laughs> I'm getting gangrene all over my body watching this team play year in and year out. I mean, seriously, I get sick every time I watch them. I, I am the dumbest Jet fan. I'm going to tell you why I'm the dumbest Jet fan. I watch. I don't watch all the football games throughout the season because I'm busy. I'm, I'm doing other things for the network and all that other stuff. I watch all the Jet games. I watch every minute of the Jet games. And I know. After the first or second quarter, the game is over. And I'm still stupid enough to watch every minute of the game. I'm that dumb. I'm sitting there. I'm saying, well, we got a chance. <laughs> oh, we're only 10 points behind in fourth quarter. 12 minutes left to the game. We're going to come back. Yeah, Zach Wilson. <laughs> I'm going to choke. I mean, he chokes. The only thing he's not going to choke on is the women or the old women he sleeps with. Yeah, I think the only time he didn't do that was his, like... I mean, I'm sick to my stomach. The third game, of, or fourth game that he started his career against the Steelers, he had that great comeback, and then never since then, you know, it's been all downhill. You know, so funny, the Jet fans, and I, I'm not taking shots at Jet fans. I'm really not. But it, it, it's it's funny because I'm a Jet fan, and I hear this. Jet fans all over social media say, we got Tyrod Taylor this year. Yes, one of the best backups in the NFL. Oh, man, Tyrod Taylor. Let's go back and look at his past in the last five years. The guy can't stay healthy. You watch what's going to happen. Aaron goes down. Tyrod Taylor goes down. And then CFL quarterback Martinez steps on the field. I, he has one good game, and everybody thinks, oh, he's our future. He's our future. Hey, like Mike White. Give yeah, me a break. Hey, he's available. You can go please, get him. <laughs> go, please. Go get Mike White. Oh, please stay away from Mike White. <laughs> Everyone, I do not want to get sick to my stomach even more. I have Ajita. I'm going to have I'm going to have the runs. I'll be on the toilet before you know it. I cannot sit here as a Jet fan and actually listen to Bill Belichick and he speak so highly of the New York Jets. Underdog fantasy sports. What are you doing to me? Yeah. I mean, seriously. He's trolling. We you know this is a trolling job. He is not. He does not mean this. This is a guy who told Woody Johnson to go shove it with the job when he was first when he first became owner. He was offered the job, got rid of it, went to New England within the division. This is this guy. He hates them. He was their defensive coordinator. I got a picture up in the top corner of when he was the DC under Parcells and the trolling he learned from the master, which is Parcells. He absolutely would troll the media at all times. And we know the the famous groceries, uh, buying the groceries, the fishing. But look, Parcells is a legend for that. Now, he had a lot more personality, You, my, my, everyone would say, than Belichick. But Belichick does it in this subtle, passive-aggressive way. And you can tell he hates Salah. He hates the Jets. This is trying to just get them to... They have highest expectations possible, so they'll crumble I don't, under the pressure. He can't sell me. He's not selling somebody that's not buying. Okay, I'm I'm going to the produce and buying the. You know, I'm I'm throwing the apple on the ground. 
So I could say, hey, can I get this for like 50 cents instead of spending $3 for the damn apple? I mean, seriously, I'm doing everything I possibly can to go in with a cheap, a cheap thought in the season, because I do not believe as much as I think that this team has a tremendous amount of talent, that this team is going to get over the hump. I just, there's something you have to prove to me. Aaron Rodgers needs to prove to me he can stay healthy. This offensive line needs to prove to me that they can stay healthy for at least five to six games before somebody goes down. I mean, somebody's going down early. I got to tell you that right now. So, and I think the Jets know that too. I just, I'm worried that, you know, all these Jet fans, and I'm I'm not going to, actually, I could speak on some of these Jet guys that are all over social media and have their own shows. And they're, listen, we have a bunch of them on this show and I, I give them a lot of credit. I, I do because they're they're they have pride, and they show pride to this team. I show pride to this team. I really do. On set, I'm speaking the truth. Off set, I want to believe that this team is going to compete for a Super Bowl every single year. What I do know about the New York Jets is that every single year, when I think that there's something good that's going to happen, something bad, rotten happens early in the season. And it's rotten. I wouldn't be surprised if Garrett Wilson goes down in game number one and tears his ACL and the season is over for him. I don't believe he goes for Fish's all 22 team. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Why? Because everybody thinks Garrett Wilson's going to have 1,500 yards because Aaron Rodgers is healthy. That's what's going to happen here, you all. Fish believes it. Oh, yeah. That's why he drafts and runs all 22. I'm I'm just, I'm sick. I'm sick of listening. To all these guys on social media and guys, Jet fans, please don't don't attack me on social media saying that I don't know what I'm talking about. I am one of the biggest Jet fans. One of the biggest. I've got every single jersey, every different different colors, everything. You name it. I follow. I know all of them. I've I've interviewed some very big Jets, and I'm friends with some Jets. Offset, as as we all know, we've done a show with one of them. Okay, I'm telling you, I love the Jets. But I'm not going to lie to you guys. How could you sit here as a Jet fan and believe that this is going to be a great season when it never is? It never happens. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to think for the worst and hope for the best. So when the worst happens, I can tell you I told you so. And if I think for the best, and I'm thinking for the best with their record, if Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, usually I fall flat on my face. It's the only thing. It's the only my, my only prediction every single year that I'm completely wrong about. It's the Jets. Every year. Yes, yeah, Speedy. Every year I pick the Jets every single week to win. Oh, I think the Jets are going to win. This is a good game. And they fall flat on their face. Yeah. And at last season, I finally say, you know what? I'm not picking the Jets. <laughs> I'm picking against the Jets. And I finally caught up. Oh. And I actually won. Oh, believe, believe me, our, our friend Pete Bursick knows who knows that very uh, well. Who, by Pete. the way, by the way, we're gonna have him out tomorrow as well. Oh, um, Pete's gonna love. We should have had a Pete on the Thursday night show. Yeah, we, that would have been great. <laughs> it was fun. It was funny, Fish. This was uh, two years ago, and we had about a, right at the start of the season too. Errol was so sure that the Jets were gonna beat the Vikings at the end of that season, so we were, we we, we, it, him, we, we brought Stop him it. back Stop on it. earlier that sick. year, and it, they were out of, having got it at that point. Makes that me was sick to my the, the Jets were one yard short. I just, I, I, I want to throw up. Every time I, I, I speak about this team, and honestly, if you're a Giant fan, you can't be excited either. I mean, no. because everybody wants to throw Daniel Jones under the bus, but where is this team? I mean, Joe Shane made me want to throw up watching him on Hard Knocks. And then the Giant fans, Mikey C is speaking, oh, I like Joe Shane. I like what he did. I like what he did in the offseason. It's Bill Gettleman. It's, it's Gettleman's fault. It's all Gettleman's fault. Hold on one second. It's Gettleman's fault? Yeah, his contracts were horrible. There's no question. Nobody wanted to play for the Giants. Nobody wanted to go there. So you had to overpay people. For years, the Jets had to do that because the Jets sucked. Now everybody wants to go there. I mean, Smith went there on a pretty good contract. Um, Moses went there on a good contract. Why? Because he has a ch- both of them have a chance to win as veterans. And they have Aaron Rodgers there, you know, who, you know, obviously is one of, the, one of the greatest to ever play the game. And he makes everybody look better around him when he's healthy. But I, I'm going to say this. You sit here today as a Jet fan, and you're excited. You're going to go to those, those shows, and you're going to go to the stadium, and you're going to enjoy yourself and eat some hot dogs and hamburgers and, and have those steaks and drink beer and go you know, sniff some lines before you walk into that stadium. I'm going to tell you guys one thing. Make sure you are effed up before that game is over. 
because <laughs> honestly, you don't know what's going to happen in that game, especially when Bambi Sala is the head coach. All right. I'm going to tell you this right now. Mr. Sala doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And Nathaniel can't hack it. He's the offensive coordinator. Oh, offensive coordinator. I'm sorry. <laughs> They've got three <laughs> offensive coordinators working the, the phones over there. I mean, it's pathetic. And Fish, we know how that worked out last year when Brian Dable, Mike Kafka, and the quarterback. Why do we coach hear this? I don't hear this on any of the other shows. I don't hear about uh, these three. You have three coaches calling the offensive plays, and they have to go through Robert Sala before he decides to make sure that what he's going. You're going to have three guys talking in a headset. That's what you're going to have. And Robert Sala is going to sit there with his hand. Hmm. Should we run? Should we throw? Should we hand it off to the tight end? Jeremy Rucker looks like nobody thinks that he's going to be good. Maybe we should throw him the ball on the outside. That's sweep. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, come on, guys. Are you going to trust that this, this coaching staff is going to lead the New York Jets to the Super Bowl? That's the only thing I worry about. This team is talented. I don't think they could coach. I don't. I could coach this team better than them. Yep. I think I would rather Aaron Rodgers, you know, being the player coach, you know, he's out there calling the defensive plays and calling the offensive plays. I'll tell you, you know what? CJ Mosey can call the defensive plays and Aaron Rodgers can call the offensive plays and we don't have to have coaches. I think the Jets have a better chance of winning a ma the majority of the games by just dealing with that. I am sick. I am sick of talking about the New York Jets until I see this team go on a four game winning streak with Aaron Rodgers and all these players without anybody going down and saying, hey, you know what? In 10, in 10 days, they've won two out of three games, or in 10 days, they're 3-0, and and they beat the San Francisco 49ers. Then I'll have something to pat myself on the back. Until then, Jet fans, I don't want to hear you. Maybe. I don't want to hear anything. <laughs> Joe Beningo, please. I don't want to hear it. Oh, it hurts. And then you have... You know, Jake Asman, you know, speaking about the Jets. Do you want me to go on? I could go on. I mean, we've had them all. We've had them all on this show. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here. I'm not taking shots at them. I don't disagree with some of their takes. I just don't like them. Maybe, I don't like them. Maybe they should have a I hate them. Maybe they should have I'm a sick. Call the place. I'm going to choke on this mic right now. You know why? Speedy, because you like to choke on mics, right? No, I don't. You don't have to choke on a mic. No, you, 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 you do. I mean, every single time you talk, you, you know, you're trying to lick your lips and try to get that phlegm up, you know, that's choking, right? No. What do you call that? Talking. That call, talking and choking on your own phlegm? I don't have to make physical contact with the mic. Well, you can. I mean, I it can. It doesn't have to be I mean, good. it would be good. I mean, you do spit at the mic. I mean, it's pretty damn disgusting when I wipe it, wipe it every single night. It is disgusting. I'm, I'm sorry. You do like to spit. It, it, it's, I feel it over here. I feel the whirlwind of your spit coming right at me during the show sometimes. I, I'm just letting you know. It hit, one time, it hit me in the forehead. I never said anything. I kept it to myself. You know, I, I don't know what you do in your spare time, but uh, I did get sick to my stomach. Anyways, uh, Fish, yeah, what are you doing? You know, you know, Speedy, Nas only had one mic also, so you got to clean it every so oh, often. All I need is one mic, but he's not talking about that mic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the reason why you're not hearing about the tri offensive coordinators, the tri co whatever we have, is because none of them are calling plays. They're merely suggesting possible plays that Aaron will just not listen to because he's the one calling the offense. He's got it's like he's the guy that got all these guys' jobs so they can just sit there and just be the yes people for him. They might as well just all be in the darkness while he plays for the rest of the season while and, and learn something about themselves, taking some ayahuasca like Aaron did, Ooh. because that's as good as they're going to be. I want to hang this guy him. is going to make all the plays as okay. long as he's healthy. If he's not healthy, it's over. That's it. This is a house of cards, this Jess team. If they have a crack in it. Not house of the it, Dragon? I mean, I love that. I love that show. Man, that's the best. I think they had to cancel House of Cards because of uh, what's his face oh. was on it, Spacey. But, oh, uh, but, uh, you know, I, what I mean, you, like uh, it's just I, one I injury away. Let me, let me tell you, I can <laughs> I tell bet. you I've had my bump ins with uh, Kevin Spacey before. No kidding. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you off air. Uh, it's uh, very yeah, interesting. I don't Here's think there's any, uh, safe for work types of conversations about what, about that guy from what I've heard. Well, but, you know, uh, you know. but look, the, the jets, the, the are, are they super bowl contenders? 
probably if they could stay healthy, but no one's ever tried to throw together a veteran team, a bunch of guys from disparate places with so little dependent on their draft stock like they are right now. That's what's going on. They have some, it's not, a, an, it's an unorthodox way to build a contender. Can it work? Does it look like they're a contender on paper? Sure it does. But there's a big if here, right? There's the biggest if of any contender that's out there. And I think Belichick knows that. And I think that's why he's messing with them, that it could fall apart in a huh. horrific way. Well, LeBron speaking out uh, again, uh, you know, making airwaves and headlines, uh, making me throw up. LeBron James named Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Montana, and John Elway as his Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks. On first take, Shannon Sharp agreed with LeBron's list, but was torn with John Elway, Aaron Rodgers, and Peyton Manning. He ultimately went with Elway, who he played with. Sharp called Brady, Montana, and Mahomes no-brainers as the top three quarterbacks. Stephen A. Smith responded saying that putting Elway over Peyton is ridiculous. He added that LeBron, yes, LeBron, should be disqualified from the NBA Mount Rushmore for making such a ridiculous statement. Oh, uh, I actually agree with, uh, as far as I'm concerned, with Stephen A. Smith, because why the hell is LeBron James speaking about the quarterbacks? Who the hell is LeBron James? I mean, if he wants to make the Mount Rushmore of basketball players, as he puts himself on the top and Michael Jordan on the other side, I mean, I think it's ridiculous. No, but... Le Le LeBron, if he were to make a Mount Rushmore <laughs> more of a, a Mount Rushmore, he would just put himself <laughs> twice as two sons. I love LeBron. He just pisses me off even further every single mm -hmm. time he speaks. He really does. But I, I, I will come out and say, He's not wrong about Tom Brady. He's not wrong about Joe Montana. I don't know about John Elway. Where's Dan Marino? Where is Dan Marino? Dan Marino, statistically, is probably the greatest quarterback to ever play this game. Statistically. The greatest. Yes, he never won a Super Bowl. It takes a team to win a Super Bowl. I could say this over and over and over again. You need a good quarterback. A quarterback has to play well in some of the Super Bowls. As we all know, Tom Brady and, and quite a few Super Bowls did not look good. But his team did. You need a team to win. You need a quarterback to make the throws when need be. I am not going to sit here and not put Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, or any of the quarterbacks I just mentioned. Why is Patrick Mahomes on the Mount Rushmore? He's not done yet. He is not done. Now, will he be? Absolutely. He still has a lot of career left. He could be number one. We don't know what he is. And it, it, yes, if he would if he would have be done right now, Patrick Mahomes could you can argue is one of the top five quarterbacks of all time. I don't know if he is. He hasn't done enough yet. Yeah, he won three Super Bowls. Again, it takes a team to win a Super Bowl. He is on his way of breaking a lot of records. And I'm not taking that away from Patrick Mahomes. I know everybody's going to think I'm crazy here not putting Patrick Mahomes on Mount Rushmore. How many years has he played in the NFL? Six? These guys, I mean... It was a different game when Joe Montana played. It was a different game when Tom Brady was at an elite level. Now, obviously, Tom Brady won with the Buccaneers. We we all know he did win a Super Bowl after the fact when he was like 43, 42 years old. Fantastic. There's a lot of reasons why Patrick Mahomes has won those Super Bowls and three Super Bowls in such a short time. Andy Reid is one of the greatest coaches of all time. He's one of the greatest offensive minds we've ever seen. You need a good coach to win. As Tom Brady, I know everybody keeps saying Tom Brady won without Bill Belichick. Does Tom Brady win six Super Bowls without Bill Belichick? The answer is no. Not a chance in hell. And Bill Belichick probably doesn't win six Super Bowls without Tom Brady. It takes a team to win championships. Now, Shannon Sharp. Shannon, shame on you. You played in the NFL in the 90s against Dan Marino. You know what Dan Marino was. Okay? It was at the tail end of Dan Marino's career. It was like, I think he was drafted in 98, 99. But 
Shannon Sharp knows who Dan Marino is and what he did for the NFL and football. And playing on that crappy Dolphin team year in and year out with no number one wide receiver. Yeah, you have one or two here and there. And I don't want to hear that Tom Brady never played with top-end wide receivers or top-end players at the at, at different positions because that's a lie. Gronk is probably the best tight end ever. Randy Moss is probably one of the top five wide receivers ever. I, I mean, Edelman's probably the best playoff wide receiver, probably top five top wide receivers ever in the playoffs. Wes Welker is pretty damn good, too. And good running games. And good offensive lines. And great coaching and defense. Again, LeBron James should not be speaking. I don't want to hear LeBron James speak anything but basketball. No politics. No music. I don't care what you like to listen to. It doesn't mean anything to me. I want to hear about what you think about the Lakers this year. Where are the Lakers going with J.J. Redick? I would like to hear that one. Tell me. Try to pitch a sale to me on that one. Because... To me, when you look at that roster, that roster sucks. And they're going nowhere with that roster. I was going to say, do you really want to hear it? <laughs> I do, because I want to hear the bull crap that comes out of his mouth. They're a 10th or a ninth seed at best. The Lakers stink. They're not good. Now, no, don't tell me about your son, Bronny, and what he's going to be. He's not going to make a difference on that roster this year. He's never going to make a difference, honestly. I'm just speaking the truth. I'm right now looking at... This Mount Rushmore, Shannon Sharp, and I, I Stephen A. Smith. I, I, I want to give Stephen A. Smith a pound. I want to give him a pound because Stephen A. Smith is the first person to step in and tell LeBron James to shut the f up. I'm going to be the second, even though he probably doesn't care that I'm saying anything. Who the hell is this guy? I'm going to tell you who I am. I'm going to tell you, Mount Rushmore. When you're comparing quarterbacks and what they did, you got to look at errors. You got to look at the game for what it was when they played. And Dan Marino, I can argue, was the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. Honestly, numbers would tell you that he was. Could you imagine Dan Marino play with the rules now in the NFL? In the prime of his career? I mean, I mean he would have thrown like 150,000 yards. I mean, the guy had the best arm. It was so accurate. It's such a beautiful... Are th throwing, you know, throwing touch. I mean, it was amazing. I couldn't stand him. I'm a Jet fan. I couldn't stand when he played the Jets. He always killed the Jets. Oh, my God. Every time he played the Jets, he'd throw 300 yards, 350 yards, 325 yards. Every single time. Jets in Jet Stadium. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Giant Stadium. Or you go over there in Miami, he's throwing you know, you know, dimes all over the field. And nobody could stop him. No matter who was the corner or the, the secondary on the Jets. Why isn't Dan Marino on there? Here's my Mount Rushmore. And I, I'm and, and by the way, I think my thoughts to Mount Rushmore is probably more highly regarded than LeBron James. I'm not saying LeBron James is not a football fan or LeBron James doesn't know a little bit about football, but He's a basketball player. I mean, I'm not saying that he doesn't know anything about sports, but I'm just, I don't want to hear his thoughts to it. Here, here's my Mount Rushmore. Joe Montana. Dan Marino. Tom Brady. Peyton Manning. Ah. Who's the other one? I, I, I'm going to go with five on my Mount Rushmore. Hmm. That's a, that's a good one. But I, those, those four guys are definitely there. I mean, you could argue Drew Brees is there, too. Right. You could argue. I mean, I, I'd put Drew Brees right there, too. He'd be on the edge. Because of the size. I mean, he was five foot, like, nine, five foot ten. He was unbelievable. The numbers, numbers are, are very similar to Peyton. So. I mean, his numbers are unbelievable. And he won a Super Bowl. You can't take that away from him. He played pretty well in that going to that Super Bowl. Should have won another one, but uh, thank you to, uh, you know, the referees. LA and, referees, yes. And I'll, uh, he doesn't have two Super Bowls. But Peyton does. Tom does. Joe Montana does. I mean, yeah. Pay Dan Marino has none, but I, I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm putting Dan Marino there. And like you said, it's a, it's a team sport. Peyton Manning didn't exactly play well in his second one. <laughs> I'm just, I, I just don't understand. And, and Stephen A. Smith has absolutely every reason to speak out on this. Because honestly, 
as good as John Elway was, and he was good. He should have played baseball, but he was good. I mean, I would have loved to see him go and play for the Yankees. I mean, he could have turned into a, you know, a World Series champion, and then we never have to talk about John Elway because uh, we won't hear the stories that he, you know, off the field on some of the crazy things that he did. And even on the field, I mean, Mikey C told me some stories about John Elway. They bumped into John Elway in the clubs when he was playing in the NFL. I'm not going to say it on live radio. I don't want to scare people off on John Elway, but uh, no, John Elway is uh, an interesting fellow, especially when he's married. But <laughs> I'm going to get myself into trouble on this show. But I'm just, yeah, I get myself in trouble all the time. That doesn't really matter. Anyways, I, I'm just saying, Stephen A. Smith is right. I'm taking Peyton Manning over John Elway. Peyton Manning's the best regular season quarterback of all time. The best. So, I mean, you can't really sit there and take somebody like John Elway. I know he won two Super Bowls. And by the way, that Super, that Super Bowl championship that he won in the AFC title game when they beat the Jets, by the way, they should have never got out of that game. The, Jet, the Jets gave that game away. They gave that game away in the second half. They did, and I'm, I'm I'm sorry, Bill Parcells. Don't don't make any excuses on that. You gave that game away, and I know you guys love Bill Parcells because you're Giant fans. He gave that game away. So, I mean, the Jets could have won that Super Bowl that year. I mean, if they go to the Super Bowl, they win the Super Bowl. But I can say that about the same time when they lost against Pittsburgh, when they should have won that series, uh, that 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 AFC title game. Thanks to Mark Sanchez and Bart Scott saying, Bart Scott saying, can't wait. I mean, come on. And uh, that's uh, the biggest saying. That's what everybody posts up on their stupid podcast. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they'll be waiting for quite a while at that, at that rate that they're going. Bart yeah. Scott's all over ESPN and all that other stuff. And I, 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 I shout out to Bart Scott. I, li I like his personality. I don't think he knows anything about anything but football, but I like Bart Scott. I, I do. I like his personality. I think that he needs to stay stick with football, but Bart Scott was was overpaid. He was an overpaid player. He never did anything for the Jets. What did he do? He didn't go to a Pro Bowl. I mean, what did he do? They overpaid a guy who called himself uh, the Ripper. I mean, what did they call himself? I called him Jack the Ripper. Because my pants always split every time I watched him play. LeBron's being a hypocrite for what he is because uh, he claims he's the greatest basketball player ever when he cites longevity as being a big reason why. And longevity is what a lot of these quarterbacks have had. And Tom Brady being the, being the biggest one of them. Even Peyton Manning, before he had that neck injury, had, had good longevity. Drew Brees had good longevity. And LeBron is claiming a quarterback in Patrick Mahomes, who started in the NFL for seven years, is a already a top five quarterback in the NFL. It's ridiculous. And Shannon Sharp agreeing with that is ridiculous. I understand he's won three Super Bowls in seven years. That's great. Again, it takes a team to do that. It's not one player. Yeah, he, he played well. There's no question that he did. But you don't know if, let's say, Patrick Mahomes goes down and he breaks his back. Hopefully it never happens. He breaks his back. His career is over. Is he really a Hall of Famer? I mean, if you look at the numbers, he won three Super Bowls, but is he a Hall of Famer? The answer is no. I'll, I'm going to tell you why. Andrew Luck, okay? Andrew Luck played how many years in the NFL? About seven, but not was really six because he got hurt a lot. <laughs> seven years, okay? Andrew Luck played seven years. And everybody's going to say, well, if he won three Super Bowls, you, you put him in. No, you wouldn't. Because Andrew Luck was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL every single year. He was healthy. Every single year, he put up unbelievable numbers. Even with crappy teams. No offensive line, by the way, and he get killed every single year. Every single year. Look at the offensive line now with Anthony Richardson. He never had that. Never had that. He was getting killed every single week. Andrew Luck still put up those numbers. Andrew Luck could have been one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Could have. He decided at 27 years old, 28 years old, I'm done. I'm not playing anymore. I don't want to head. I don't want head trauma. I made enough money. I'm not even finishing out, out that contract. And by the way, he just signed the contract the year before. He was on his way with a six year deal. He decided, you know what? I don't want to finish my career being beaten up where I can't walk and take care of my kids. He decided to step away. Let me ask you a question. If Andrew Luck won three Super Bowls, and is Patrick, Patrick Mahomes, is he a Hall of Famer? 
is he on Mount Rushmore? He's not. He's not. And stop it if anybody thinks that he is. I know somebody who would think that he is. Ryan Hickey being one of them. I mean, Ryan is a big Colts fan. He'd probably come out and say, well, you know, and I'll be like, Ryan, get the hell out of here. The same guy who said the Bills get should the trade hell Josh Allen. Ryan. I, I'm, I'm, not I, fighting, I'm not attacking my guys. I'm not. I'm just speaking the truth here. Be fair here. Be fair. Go ahead, Fish. I, I think there's more Colts quarterbacks that I would put ahead of Mahomes if he stopped right now. I agree. I don't know why you would put him in this debate. That means he's one of the top four of all time. That's what you're saying of quarterbacks of all time. He's not there yet. Look, he's got to play a full career. He may end up, like you said, with more titles than Brady the way this has been going. Mm. So we'll talk about it then. But I, I always like to look back at like the eras because you can't really compare the eras. And if we're going to just talk about Super Bowl era, guys, how do you not bring up Johnny Unitas? Johnny Unitas. Johnny Unitas. This is the guy who basically reinvented the position the first Mobile time. Quarterback, right? first one. Yep. He's the one that was airing it out before anyone else really was. Everyone wanted to be him. When, you, when I was a kid, you always would hear the older people, you know, the old heads say Johnny Unitas. And then this other guy from the next generation from the 70s and the Cowboys with Roger Staubach. Yep. You know, these were the legendary guys that all the, all my, you know, all my uncles, you go to family barbecues. These are the guys they talked about were the greats. And then, you know, Montana was contemporary for them. So they talked about him glowingly, but not in the same way they talked about Unitas and Staubach, right? Now today we talk about Montana like that because he hasn't played since the early mid nineties. And you can compare some of those guys. It's going to take decades before we talk about Mahomes like those guys, even though... Even though he's been super successful, it's not a shot at him. It's just he, he's not, he hasn't done what a guy like Johnny Unitas did and revolutionized the game. He didn't do what Peyton Manning did and revolutionize the position of quarterback. He didn't have the success against Tom, uh, with like Tom Brady has had so far. He's not there yet. And Tom Brady had a winning record against him. So, it, like, there's, there's a lot of things that he'd have to overcome to be top four of all time. He may do it. He's that good. But let's pump the brakes. Like, I, if you looked at the first, was it seven, eight years of Don Mattingly's career, you might have said he was going to be the greatest ba first baseman of all time or one of the greatest since the dead ball era. Well, he didn't really have it after that. He had, you know, this could happen. Like you said, an Achilles, who even knows? God forbid something happens. We have to enjoy, you know, uh, this and, you know, the embracing of Taylor Swift and the oh, embracing of, of all the Swifties please. to make sure we end up with this oh, greatness. I mean, the Kelsey family, they're loving it. They just made, they just got a hundred million dollar contract for their podcast. I mean, come on. Who's, who's better than the Kelsey brothers right now? They don't have to have their own cereal. Now the Kelsey brothers cereal. I mean, they're rolling in the dough. Why? Because of Taylor Swift. I mean, who's better than him? I, I, I and I, I will say this, I will say this about Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes always, always speaks, but he always puts up. He, he it's not like when he speaks, he knows how good he is. I mean, Kermit the Frog knows, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, what is that? Sesame Street? Is that, that Kermit the Frog? Oh, no, the, the, uh, the Muppets. Muppets. That's it. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you know, I'm a little off on today on that. I, I never watched any of those shows, by the way. But uh, I was more like, uh, you know, a Disney guy. I watched all the, the, you know, Cinderella, Bambi. I was good. I was good all about Bambi. That's why I, I called Bambi Sala, you know, because, you know, I watched that movie a million times because it was so boring. I was, you know, when I was a kid, I, I like to watch those, like, love stories. You know why? Because I was just such a bad, mean person. So I had to watch the love stories to calm me down, Speedy. You know, I, I mean, you like love stories, right? No. Not, what's your favorite love story? I don't know. You don't like movies? I don't know. You don't like any love story movie? I, maybe, but... That, Give me one. I don't... I, you don't remember one? I, yeah, I don't know. Oh, damn, I you like Jerry Maguire? I would consider that a love story, but it's a love story. It's a good movie. I like the movie a lot. I'm not going to preface it as yes. I know, a, a, I know there's a I know there's a it's a love story. It's it's all about love. That's one of my favorite movies, by the way. How about Tombstone? You like that movie? I do. Okay, that's a love story. Okay, but there's other contexts involved too. Yeah, that's a love story. I'm giving you that. These are two movies that are my favorite movies, and it's a love story. I'm just saying, most movies are love stories. You can't sit there and tell me that they're not, except the horror movies. The comedy movies are love stories, too. There he is. I'll be your Huckleberry, Speedy. Are you my Huckleberry? No. Why? Well, okay. You are. No, whatever. What are you doing? Before we get any other uh, any other tangents, uh, Keith had comments on Miami. Tangents, you said? Tangents, yeah. Oh. Um, Miami uh, Miami had very good wide receivers. They had no defense. Duper and Clayton were very good. But, Keith, compare the quarterbacks we're discussing here on this on this 
Mount Rushmore. Tom Brady mm. had like Errol saying Gronk, arguably the greatest tight end ever. Randy Moss, top three wide receiver ever. Pretty Peyton good Manning had, too. Yeah, Peyton Manning had Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wade. Great defenses. Joe too. Montana had Jerry Rice. Dan, Mark Clayton and Mark Duper are nowhere close to those types of players. Like, okay, maybe they're like Pro Bowl type players. They're not Hall of Famers, and they're like, and they're not anywhere close to those guys. Honestly, if you look at Aaron Rodgers. And I don't care what anybody says. Devontae Adams, he did have. But besides him, Jordy Nelson would have never been the player that he is. None of those guys. I don't want to hear about Randall Cobb. We had Worthy on. Who, who said that yeah. Randall Cobb was good? I mean, come on. Randall Cobb sucked. Okay? He stinks. Oh, no. It was Daryl Reed last week. Daryl <laughs> Reed. Daryl, I love you. Come on. Randall Cobb sucks. Okay? Jordy Nelson is a shell of who he would have been if he wouldn't have Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Donald Driver. I mean, how many how many teams did he play for? before he uh, actually turned into a pretty good wide receiver. I mean, how many quarterbacks threw him the ball before he actually played well? I mean, come on. Stop it, guys. Aaron Rodgers threw to nobody. He threw to nobody. If you want to you want to see this and say, you want to put somebody on Mount Rushmore, I'm, I'm going to put my number five. I'm going to put Aaron Rodgers. I would put Aaron Rodgers over Patrick Mahomes right now, too. Just because... Not because of the wins. And and by the way, Keith, I, I understand you say Elway because he's been he's a fantastic playoff player. That's that's great. John Elway, by the way, when you look at the players that he played with, look at the defenses that he played with. Look at the offensive linemen he played with. Look at the running back he played with, who shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame, by the way. <laughs> I don't know how he's in the Hall of Fame, by the way. Maybe John Elway was, uh, you know, you know. Hanging out with somebody uh, with the glory holes in the bathroom. I don't know, but, you know, maybe hanging out with Speedy, right? You hanging out? No. Would you hang out with John Elway? What do you think? I don't know. Would you throw? Would you play catch with uh, John Elway? Sure. Okay. All right. Who's throwing the ball and who's catching it? Both of us have to do both to do that. But who, who's throwing the ball? I, I guess John, know. right? Sure. All right. All right. I figured he was throwing the ball. And you're catching it, right? Okay. Do uh, you think he could catch it? Maybe. All right. Spiral. Nice straight spiral. I would hope so. He's a right at the all chest. quarterback. Okay. I'm just I'm just <laughs> asking. I mean, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh <laughs> John Elway. Uh I, I I'm not saying John Elway couldn't be on somebody's Mount Rushmore, but like you said, I, I agree with you, Fish. I mean, Johnny Unitas was there, Bart Starr was pretty good. I mean, I mean, if you go from different gener, you know, different decades, I mean, you could find guys. I mean, I don't think Terry Bradshaw is. No, he had I, more I, help than anybody. Yeah, I, I'm not saying Terry Bradshaw, but I mean, there were a lot of good quarterbacks. You know, it's to say that I would take John Elway over all of those guys, that's a little crazy. And John Elway, you know, he pretty much picked where he wanted to go when he was getting drafted. Right. Okay. He was the original he was, Eli Manning. Yeah, he was a crybaby. He he forced his way to the Broncos. Forced his way to the Broncos. You know why? Because he didn't want to play for Buffalo. He didn't want to play for Buffalo. You know, I don't know if anybody knows that story. You know what Buffalo did? They drafted Jim Kelly. <laughs> I know even though Jim Kelly never got over the hump, four Super Bowls in a row. I mean, that's pretty successful. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, and then I mean, and the Dolphins drafted Dan Marino in the same draft, and the Chiefs drafted Ch Todd Blackledge instead. There you go. I, I mean, it's, it's you. You can argue. I, I just think LeBron James is out of his damn mind. I, I really do. I, I think he needs to stick to basketball and stay away from it. That'd be like Was the, that the, the Jets the same also. Yacht. What happened? Speedy, did the Jets take Ken yeah. O'Brien in that draft as yeah, well? Please. Oh. You want to? We've taken too many jabs. Right, I figured I'd change do it. You up. want me to throw up even more? Stop. I mean, I remember <laughs> that draft too. I was a young kid in that draft. Oh, I, 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 I wasn't even watching the Jets at the time, but I, I, I watched that draft because the NFL Network played that draft. And boy, boy, oh boy, the drafts are nowhere close to what they are now. I mean, they would just call out names from round to round. It was, the, and it was more than I think it was more than seven rounds. I think it was like eleven or. There used rounds. to be there used to be nine at one point, yeah. and I'm sure it was a little more even before that. But it was fish. It was also funny when you watch that clip, like because I think he was 26 and Marino was 27. Uh, the commissioner at the time also disgusting. announced the position, so they said quarterbacks. All the Jets fans thought they were taking Marino. How's Jet fan? The Jets had a chance to get Warren Sapp. No, the, you know who they decided to draft? Kyle Brady. Okay, Kyle uh, Brady. Please, I, I I could go back. And so many times, just an absolute debacle of the New York Jets. They had guys sitting there 
you know, waving their hands. They had a chance to get Dan Marino. He was sitting there twice, and they couldn't take him. So it just uh, oh didn't Marino get in trouble in college or something? Yeah, like it did. did. Like he had a good season, but he had so he got in trouble Stop. and he I fell. Mean, he was, like they said, he was doing cocaine or something. He got caught with drugs, and he wasn't really doing that. I think it was a drug thing. I something happened. He got caught, you know, at a party well, or something. It's like a good that. thing he went to Miami. Perfect place for that, not to get a habit doing something <laughs> like that, you know. I don't know if he was doing that, but uh, again, <laughs> it just think it's so funny. It's it's so it, it's so fitting to see LeBron James come out and then you have Shannon Sharp and you know, everybody, Stephen A. Smith. Oh, where's uh, where's Wright? Where's where's Nick Wright from all this? I mean, oh, Nick Wright was probably from Mahomes number one. He's hanging on, you know, uh, he's hanging on LeBron James's left testicle. I mean, seriously, everything LeBron says, LeBron's a god. I wouldn't be surprised you, if you Nick Wright even... or Mahomes is the greatest. Time. Gargle it, gargle it, sick, gargle it. <laughs> you can't even take Shannon Sharp seriously. Like, I, I have trouble taking him seriously sometimes anyway. But on this one, he just like was like, that man got me two Super Bowls. He's number four. Like, I don't care. I don't know what you're watching, but that guy got me too. And he he wouldn't even bother with the analytics. He's just like, I that's seven. Seven did this. He talked about it like how Steelers guys would talk about yeah. Roethlisberger as seven, you know, like that type of thing. And it looked uh, good for him. Uh, he was – Shannon Sharp was an amazing You know, I, I've broken a lot of records. Friend. I've broken a lot of records. But, you know, over the last past week, I take seven dumps a day. I mean, I'm on my seven. way for number seven tomorrow. So just so everybody knows, number seven is lucky for me. Let's stay away from that on Thursday night because I don't need to be on, you know, on the toilet, Speedy. Or you're going to be taking over that show in front of all those people. What do you think about that? Who knows? <laughs> well, if it's how seven, we, that means how you – we set up a you, toilet right there? In front of the fans. What do you think? Me if you want to go embarrass yourself, go ahead. Why am I embarrassing myself? Because most people would be humiliated by that. I'd be humiliated not by anything, taking a dump. I didn't say you. I am not humiliated on anything. Yeah, I right. would walk around the bar probably butt-ass naked if you dared me to. I think I'd do pretty much anything. You want to go do that with... I'm not ashamed of myself, people. Speedy. I'm not ashamed of myself. I, I, I do like crazy things. And, you know, and maybe that's why Britney stays with me so... <laughs> Well, if you you're like gonna it. do a number seven, that's that's three deuces and a number one, or mm. is that two deuces and three number ones that mm. you're gonna take while you're there live on camera? Um, I would be two dumps. Uh, that would be interesting. I mean, and you know, and they don't smell, right, Speedy? Okay. <laughs> so that doesn't, doesn't matter. I mean, I want to encourage I'd that. I'd be hanging out in the bar. I gotta go, guys. I gotta go. You see me sitting over there. It's right by the fireplace, and they got a toilet set up for me. I mean, who's better than me? I mean, sit over there. got a mic in my hand, you know, and a computer in the other. <laughs> <laughs> or my underwear in the other. What do you think about, about that, Speedy? I would probably go to the other side of the room. <laughs> fish, enjoy, fish, enjoy doing the show on your own. <laughs> fish, you could take over Millis house. That's what happening. <laughs> I will gladly leave. Oh, man. I, you know what it is? is I, I'm crazy enough to do something like that. I, I probably, if you dare me to do something, I'd probably do it. And, and, and I'm not going to say, I mean, maybe on Thursday night, I, somebody might dare me and I might do it. So I, I just, I, I don't just, drink. I'm not going to do Just hope that. they don't know about uh, the Icy Hot story so they don't no, dare we'll you to use any I mean, I might talk about it. I mean, that's something to fun, you know, laugh about, right, Speedy? <laughs> It was not icy hot. It was bang gay, right? I don't like, know. I I'm not was, doing analysis was, on your dares. Oh, hold on one second. I think you should. I'm not going to. Why not? already done too much analysis on your hypothetical bathroom <laughs> at Miller's Ale. <laughs> I listen. I, I do. I do enjoy a nice dump. I mean, who doesn't? You, know, you grab a newspaper. You grab your phone, and you gotta watch. And by the way, I, I want to say something today. I want to. I want to do something. I was. I was working. Okay. I was in a facility. And I got to, I had to go. Okay. And you had to put in like a code to get into the bathroom. Right. So I know it's 1800 in this place. So I'm not going to tell you what place it is. because I don't want anybody to steal it, but I went into the bathroom. There's two stalls. Okay. Now I, I was on the toilet. I was enjoying myself and I was looking at the phone. Now, every time I go to the bathroom, I always watch when I wash my hands because I'm holding my thing. I wipe down my phone. Okay. I do that. This guy came in. All right. I was on, you know, jot the numbers. I'm enjoying myself. You know, I had, I had about 10 minutes to, you know, to enjoy it. 
And this guy comes in, sits on the stall. I know he's sitting on the stall. And you hear him go, yeah, 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 just exploding off, you know, off the, yeah, I've never heard so many, you know, farts in my life. I mean, it was out absolutely for five minutes straight. It just like, me, 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 like, 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 like squeezing his cheeks. All right. He was done. You know, wipes his, you know what, and, and he get, he's about to walk out. He doesn't even wash his hands. He, uh... just walks, he just walks out. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, if you're going to take a dump, Make sure if you're looking at your phone, which he probably was, wash your phone, wash your hands, and please, please make sure nobody's sitting on the other stall or in the other stall. I mean, Speedy, you especially with those holes, you know? I mean, you need to stay away from those things. You know, anyways, I, I, that's a true story that happened today. It was, it's kind of disgusting. I, I was really, you know, disgusted. I mean, you're, you're out there, you're in a facility, there's so many people with sicknesses and you know, you're around a million different people and, and you take a dump and you don't wash your hands. I mean, come on. I mean, we're, we're trying to teach our kids something. I mean, I don't have any children yet, but uh, my first thing I tell my kids is when they actually know what right and wrong is, is wash your damn hands. But anyways, Speedy, you wash your hands, right? Okay. I'm just asking. I, I don't, you know, you, you, you know you, we shake hands. We, you know, sometimes give it like a bro hug. You know, I don't want to make sure, I want to make sure that I'm, you know, I'm washing my hands after I touch you if you're not washing yours. You know, I don't, don't want to get diseases or anything. There's a, there's a disease going around, speedomia. You ever heard about that? Why are you falsifying things for medical people? I'm just telling you there's a disease out called speedomia. I'm just letting you know. You, you got to be careful. Why are you freaking people out for no reason? I'm not freaking anybody <laughs> out. There is, uh, you know, uh, like a flu-like symptom called speedomia. <laughs> I mean, seriously, and you, you got to stay away from that. It, it, it's dangerous. Anyways, I, I just wanted to let everybody know. Uh, Garrett Cole suffered a leg injury during the start yesterday and left the game during the seventh inning. The Yankees diagnosed the calf, that it's a calf injury and will likely require an IL stint. Cole was also scratched from the start July with a body with body fatigue and didn't start his season until June due to an elbow inflammation. The Yankees also still have pitchers Luis uh, Heal and Clark Schmidt on the injured uh, injured list, possibly coming back next week. Cole has a 3.86 ERA, a 1.33 whip, 69 strikeouts, and 12 starts this season. The Yankees currently a half game ahead of the Orioles for the number one spot in the East, ladies and gentlemen. What is this spell for the New York Yankees? That's what it spells, ladies and gentlemen. If Gary Cole is going to go on an IL stint, how many games are left in the season? There's about 15 games left, maybe less. That means he is going to be out for at least two weeks, maybe longer. That means he might not play in the first round of the playoffs. That is Bad news for the New York Yankees. Bad news. Because Gary Cole is the only guy right now I'm going to trust on in this rotation going into the playoffs. Last year, who was the best pitcher for the Yankees in the playoffs? Gary Cole. Gary Cole is a good playoff pitcher. He is. He is actually really good. If you look at his ERA, you look at his whip, it is good. Now that he is on an IL stint, that is a significant injury, and it it's definitely could backfire at the New York Yankees. I don't care what this lineup is going to do. And by the way, this lineup has played crap offensively in the last past month. As a matter of fact, the Yankees have the worst record in the MLB against under 500 teams. Does anybody know this? The worst. The worst record against under 500 teams. And the best record for over 500 teams. Now, everybody's going to say, well, everybody that makes the playoffs are over 500. What does that mean? You got to play against each team's best pitcher, each team's best lineup. And your best pitcher is now on the IL. I just, as a Yankee fan, and this is always, this always happens to the New York Yankees. Always happens. Every single time. Every single time the season's almost over, the Yankees are right there at the cusp. And these bad injuries happen. Last year, Aaron Judge. 
he gets hurt, you know, with the Dodger, playing against the Dodgers, showing off to his family. They come and fill out the seats. He hurts his toe. He's not the same player, you know, in the regular season for the rest of the season. He goes into playoffs. He's, he's a shell of himself. Giancarlo Stanton, remember him? He's a pretty good playoff player for the Yankees. Last year, went into the playoffs. Shell of himself. Why? Because he's an injury-prone player. This is a problem. This pitching staff, this bullpen, horrible right now. This is the worst. And I'm going to go into it. Before the All-Star break, the Yankees had the best bullpen in football. In bas- uh, I'm sorry, in baseball. You can argue that this was the best bullpen in baseball. A streak for three years in a row now. Going into the second half, and I know everybody wants to blame Aaron Boone. It's Aaron Boone's fault. Oh, 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 gargle, gargle, gargle. Why is he the manager of the New York Yankees? It is not Aaron Boone's fault that these guys are not showing up game in and game out pitching well. All Aaron Boone could do is have a rotation and decide who's going in and who is not going in. That is his job as a manager. These guys got to provide the strikeouts. These guys got to pro- provide the understanding of what he, they need to do on the mound. He can't tell them what to do. They already know the game plan. They have it set up before the game. Who they're playing against. What player they should pitch. How they're going to pitch against the player. That's not Aaron Boone. That's the catcher. That's the pitcher. Oh, it's Aaron Boone's fault that this guy's not hitting right now. Stop. Manager's going to get blamed. Because he's the manager. He's the leader. But right now, the Yankees are not playing well. And I know Yankee fans are sitting there, well, we're still in first place. We still have the best record in the American League. Houston has been the best team in the second half of the season out of any American League team. Go look at the numbers. I mean, they were horrible in the first half of the season. Now, what are they, five games out of having the best record in the American League? I mean, they were they were behind the Yankees by a significant margin. Yeah, it's only like three or four games now. It's like 19 games or something like that. Now they're, what, three or four games? I mean, could they catch the Yankees? Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if they do and win the pennant. It's crazy to think that, but it could happen. It, it's To me, this, is, this has been going on for a while. And, and again, is Aaron Boone going to get the blame for Yankee fans? Yeah, the Yankee fans don't like him. Is it? Aaron Boone's fault that Cole had a calf injury? No. But he's going to get the blame. And Hal Steinberg is going to be pointing fingers. You don't like to spend money. <laughs> meanwhile, the Yankee salary is the highest in baseball. And meanwhile, the Yankee salary has also been an issue when they've tried to go for higher price relievers and trades for these higher price starters, and it just doesn't work. So they have, they're have they finding this middle ground with philosophy and only blaming one guy is going to be very hard to be able to make that kind of thing work. Are we going to blame all – the Yankees are the only team dealing with pitching injuries, too. The Cleveland's had pitching injuries. The Orioles have pitching injuries. Are you going to just blame the manager on that? No. It, each approach is going to be different with this kind of thing. And the problem here is with the Yankees, like, are you going to make it where Garrett Cole has to be rushed back because you're trying to win the division? Or are you going to take the philosophy of, oh, look at the way the playoffs got the last couple of years where maybe the bye week hurts a team and maybe the Yankees are better off being a wild card team. Maybe you take that kind of approach to have Cole healthy. It's tough to tell. But with all these other pitching injuries, Luis Heal, is he ever going to get that same kind of confidence back once he comes back? Clark Schmidt. Is I he like Clark listen? Schmidt because you can I move him to the bullpen. And I think Clark Schmidt should be moved to the bullpen when he comes back. He's not a starter. He's missed the whole season. He was pitching so well, and and, and nobody thought he was going to be out as long as he has. He went out, like, I think in, like, uh, the second month or the third month of the season, Mm -hmm. and he's been out ever since. Everybody said he was going to be back early in the second half. He's missed the whole season. Clark Schmidt is a guy that I would move into the bullpen. You can move him in the sixth or seventh or make him a long relief guy in the fifth, sixth, and seventh. That's what I would do with Clark Schmidt. Luis Heal is interesting because Luis Heal, he was up and down this year, but when he was on, nobody can touch him. And if Garrett Cole cannot pitch in the in any of the series that they're going to play and whoever they're playing against, I would move Luis Heal in, into that rotation because I think against top-notch teams, he's played well against. It's been the really bad teams or the – the teams that you would think that he would just absolutely kill 
he didn't pitch well against. Mm-hmm. So the only game that I thought he got beaten up on in is the Cleveland series, yeah. the Cleveland game where he got killed. Right. He got shelved with eight runs in like two innings. Besides that, I think Luis Hill against the better teams has pitched well. It's just the bad teams. So um, I think Luis Hill coming back and Garrett Cole going down. But this is a bad sign for the New York Yankees. I, I don't know if the Yankee fans – or Yankee fans are going to sit here and say, well, you know, Garrett Cole needs the rest. He'll be back. If he's on the IL, it means there's a very good chance he might not play in the first round. There's a very good chance he might not have a start in the first round. And that means that your best pitcher, the guy that is going to be expecting an opt-out in the offseason to get more money, who has had shoulder problems, elbow problems in the last two years, where you have to worry that he's going to opt into that contract. The Yankees are going to have to deal with this contract for the next five years. Right. And you also look at some of the patterns of when the Yankees have made the ALCS in recent years. 2019, they had that same kind of issue with James Paxson. James Paxson pitched well at the beginning of the season, and then all of a sudden dealt with the injuries lingering. He took longer than he should to come back. And Luis Severino, same kind of thing. Everyone was like, oh, Luis Severino is going to be back at the All-Star break. And it took him forever to come back. And then 2022, the Yankees trade for Frankie Montez. He pitches okay. He had he had that uh, issue with his family, I think, at the beginning. And then he never is the same after that. They let him go. The Yankees needed him in the playoffs. And the Yankees are going to need that other type of guy to step up. It's not always your ace that is the best pitcher in the playoffs, but it's still something you really need. Like, in today's baseball, you can win with pitching depth in general. You don't need to build, like, the national super rotation when they had in 2019 to win a World Series anymore. But you still want to have that one guy that can go for length. And I don't know if the Yankees have the other guy that can go for the length if Garrett Cole's not 100%. And Garrett Cole was never an injury risk for the first four years with the Yankees. So this is a big concern. I want to bet on Carlos Rodon. I, I want I to bet too, on him. I just, but... I don't know. I, I just, he's hot and then he's cold in certain games. Uh, Carlos Rodon the other day. And Nestor Cortez, I mean, after watching him the other day, I wanted to throw up. I He pitches, you know, a week before he pitched fan- sensational. He gave up no runs or gave up one run. And then this game, he the, the game this weekend, he gave up like eight runs. In like two innings. I mean, that's alarming. You cannot bet on these guys. And that's the problem. There's no guarantees with this rotation. And as good as this lineup is, and this is probably the best lineup they've had since 2009, I still believe that if the Yankees don't score seven or eight runs in the playoffs with the pitching staff that they have right now, they're not going to (laughs) win. And you know it's so hard to score that many runs in the playoffs. Yeah. It's when you get to the playoffs, as we know, like all the guys that hit like 260, 250, and like look great during the regular season, that's because they were getting their hits off of the fourth and fifth starters and to inflate those averages from what really would be if they were facing these top three guys, it would be like a 220. And, and that's what you really deal with. And that's why we saw, you know, uh, Judge, I would say before this year, he wasn't hitting as high of an average. He was hitting a little bit lower. And he just wasn't able to do it in the playoffs. I'm hoping, and as all Yankee fans are, hoping that he's turned the corner where now he's just unstoppable, you know, just something a little bit below the uh, Barry Bonds on steroids run, you know, that we haven't seen anything like that. Know. But this is the closest thing to that, I would argue, that we've seen from somebody. Uh, straight power, great, you know, and his defense like Barry Bonds too, you know, uh, uh, when he was Corey younger. Convinced was, everybody except Greg that, Giannotti. That pitching staff was pretty good when Barry Bonds was on that roster. Oh, yeah. It absolutely was. I worry that my thing is right right here is Cortez, Rodon, all the other guys. Heal never really was supposed to Stroman. be at what he became. Stroman especially. These are some of the most inconsistent pitchers I've ever seen on a Yankee team. They can be great one day and terrible the next. And then they're just, you know, and then they have those ho-hum outings which dominate most of the season for them. Cortez, I had on my fantasy team this year, Way the swings with him were crazy. He just had four starts where he shut them down, shut everyone down, gave up, I think, one earned run. And then he gets, you know, sandwiched in between just getting like clobbered. Yeah. And Rodon, as you know, has the town, ta- all the talent in the world and a live fastball. But he he's like a thrower of the ball more than a pitcher, it feels like. If he doesn't have the, the pitch, he, he just is garbage. He doesn't he doesn't really try to pitch his way out of things and try to like grind innings like he saw a guy like CC do later in his career when he didn't have the fastball anymore. Right. It's it worries me to if they don't have Cole, I don't think they can do very much. And they would absolutely have to win the division because at that point it's a one game toss up and you gotta trust Rodon. 
I, I, I don't know, man. I, I wouldn't want to do that. So I'm, you really got to be hopeful Cole can do it and that the hitting can, you know, peak at the right time. But this has been one of the more inconsistent Yankee teams. You have how many weeks left? Two weeks left? And he's on the IR. Three, I believe. I think it's 24 weeks. games left. So he needs to be back before the playoffs, to even be in this rotation. And he needs to at least have one stint around, maybe pitch one more game to get ready for the playoffs. Right. And if he doesn't, you can't start him in the first round. You can't put him in that situation where he's set to fail. And, and as good as Garrett Cole is and what he did in the playoffs last year, which was sensational, what he did against Cleveland was amazing last year. Really unbelievable what he did against Cleveland. I, I just – I don't know if I, I would bet on that this year. 